Woohoo! my brother. Great gas, my boy. Jeez, I timed in there a little bit late, bud. Yes. <laughs> uh, classic. How are you doing today, my boy? Yes, I'm really, really good. Thanks, brother. How about you? Yeah, bud. Really good. Really good. Um, still in Brazil. Still enjoying it. Having a great time. And uh, yeah, man, just uh, just happy to be having another superhumanship chat with you. And this week we spoke to, or last week we spoke to an amazing girl, Ellie Mackay, and we just took so much from that conversation didn't we bud oh so much gareth and uh, just a little bit about ellie she's an award-winning doc- documentary filmmaker and uh, she's an incredible science communicator and a great communicator in general and um, she's also like this extreme environmental uh, environment uh, specialist and activist and she's done some incredible stuff and uh, definitely worth listening to that whole conversation from last week but we took some incredible things from her conversation and we could have we could have sat down for ages on this one because there was so much that we took but we we like to distill down to like three main sort of ideas and themes for superhumanship episodes and the uh, the first one that we kind of touched on and we really both got excited about was her idea about micro adventures and taking micro micro adventures in your life and you know Ellie is a true adventurer in, in the true sense of the word and uh, she uh, she really encourages people to embrace the adventurous spirit in their own lives. And it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to identify yourself as an adventurer, but the kind of value you can gain in your, in your life by just starting to push the envelope a little bit compared to where you maybe your normal day-to-day standard life is can actually make profound, uh, can have profound effects in other areas in your life. So she's, all about finding these small things to start off with. For example, maybe you just go down to the beach and have a long walk on the beach and maybe you've just never done that or um, maybe going into the woods and camping a night, like just one night in the woods. There's people out there that have never like, you know, heard the the sounds of of your local little woods at night. And uh, these are the kind of things that she's really gets excited about. Hey, Gareth. Yeah, for sure, Craig. And it, it's, it comes down to, once again, just finding kind of the, the littlest way to kind of get into these things. And, you know, I guess as, as kids, we, we used to do a lot of these things, you know, you used to go and like camp in your backyard. <laughs> I mean, how cool was that as a kid? And then, and that, that <laughs> is like a mini adventure, you know, or micro adventure, um, even just going out in the evening and, and looking at the stars and then going, wow, wow. I, I kind of don't look up at the stars enough, you know, just, just make a little micro adventure out of that. And, um, you know, there are these things that are all available to us, you know, and, and we kind of just kind of get sucked into this vortex of like an online world and we never get to explore these things and, and all these other things are available to all of us and, and they're all free, like, you know, just going for a walk out in nature, you know, like I said, go down to the beach or in the park or in the woods or whatever, it's all free and it, you don't have to do it for like hours, just, just like a few minutes or maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes max, whatever to start off with. And, um, you know, you, it, it's healthy too. And, and you actually feel really good for it. Um, so these are all things for us to kind of explore and, and may, maybe, who knows, maybe you're, you're a little bit nervous or you don't know how to do this, or you don't have people in your circle that do these things. Um, but then the cool thing is like what Ellie told us is, if you just go to Facebook and you search, uh, I don't know, walk in the park near me, literally, you know, you'll see there's groups and groups and groups of these uh, sort of people and, and communities. And you literally, they're so inviting and so like inclusive, you know, they love to do it as well. So that they'll, you know, they'll go, yeah, of course, cool. I'm going, you know, we're going like on Saturday and we meet every Saturday, come if you want. So you know, it doesn't have to be that daunting and there, there are these groups everywhere and, and people love it. You know, we, we all love being part of a group. We all love taking people and bringing them into our groups and, and helping them out as well. You know, people might even lend you equipment or give you a lift or whatever the story is. So there's some really, really cool stuff out there for us to all start exploring. And, you know, another thing to actually, if you do do this, um, is just to be, I guess, conscious of your thoughts and, and your kind of mm-hmm. mindset, you know? So one of the things Ellie was talking about is like, like take a journal with you, uh, you know, either like a pen and paper or even just your phone, the audio notes and, 
and just like document your, your thoughts before and your mindset before. And then once you finished, you know, do the same process and, and document again. And, and then you'll see, you'll be like, wow, like I, I really was thinking quite differently after I'd done this, uh, this little micro adventure. And, and it's really, really impactful. Hey, Craig. And I mean, you know, there's, there's some cool things we can even go and do like that, that nature, mother nature has some really cool things out there that we kind of also seem to have forgotten and we can go and explore those things. Hey, Craig. Yeah, totally Gareth. And I think, you know, obviously Ellie being able to explore to places that a lot of us will never go, we can live sort of vicariously through her. But one of the themes there was that, you know, nature is so powerful and so vast and there are people out there in the world that are so connected to nature that we don't really understand. And I think in the West, we often kind of think of like these shaman type people that are close to nature and they've had these um, little like tinctures and healing balms and stuff from nature. We think, oh, this is just some old, old dude that's got some weird idea about health. And we often discount that kind of wisdom. And I think that's really so wrong. Like there's it's so important to embrace these old cultures. There's so many uh, little ways and uh, of doing things in the world that aren't necessarily, that don't meet the Western eyes easily. We think, oh, that just looks strange because we're not used to it, but they work so often and they're so powerful and they work for the people because there's so, there's certain folklore there around these kinds of things. And uh, we don't even know half the the kind of, medicinal properties of half these things and what happens and what we tend to do in the west is we try to distill down the one or two active ingredients in inverted commas of these these ancient like remedies and i think what often gets lost when you do that is you sort of you zoom in so close into these things that you lose the bigger picture of them and uh, sort of the setting of, of these of these kind of places and medicines and and also um, how they all work together as sort of a, a compound rather than just one unique little um, isolated ingredient, you know. And uh, I just find that, well, we found that so fascinating. It was like um, even coming from this incredible science uh, scientist, how she really like gave a lot of credence to the ideas of, these, of this ancient wisdom. And that gave us a lot of hope, definitely. And uh, I think part of the way that, that Ellie was able to sort of bring that across is her ability to, to tell amazing stories. And that was like the, the sort of second thing that we took deeply from this conversation was how important it is to cultivate an, the sort of storytelling uh, of our lives. Uh, and also the reasons behind why storytelling is so important to cultivate. Hey Gareth. Yeah, for sure, Craig. I think she is like a master storyteller, right? Like, and um, the way she answered questions, like she almost told a story with how she answered a question. And I thought that was like really powerful and, and it's very, very engaging. And there's a certain pattern to how stories work. Like if it, there's, you know, there's ways like which stories are structured and that's what actually keeps us engaged in stories, you know, and, and makes us really kind of like, sort of sit on the edge of our seats wanting to kind of know what's going to happen next and this is what she did like like perfectly and and literally all her answers she just kept you going kept you going kept you going and it was like it's such an art to do and and she did it like in the the whole podcast but also just in each of the um each of the questions that she that she that she answered um, and i think this is a this is something which is really really important in in this day and age you know for us um that where everyone is kind of online, you know, we all are online, we're all sharing stuff. But um, if we really want to engage people, we really need to kind of try and learn to tell good stories, you know, and to tell them in the right way. Um, it's how we've always done things, you know, like we started with sitting around the campfire and it's kind of, it just carries on, but it's in its kind of new form right now. And I think there, there's also like a really cool part about sto storytelling, um, which kind of gives people permission in terms of how they want to interpret things themselves. And that's also really cool because each of us are going to hear something and we're going to hear it differently. 
And uh, there's a thing called author's theory, which is really interesting that you told us about. Hey, Craig. Yeah, totally. It was, it was really great, wasn't it? And uh, uh, it's, it's basically the, we all have this lens through which we see the world and which we hear things through. And, uh, you know, we could get onto the way she suggests listening as well, which is really, really, really great. <laughs> but basically, we're always projecting our own realities into the world, uh, you know, all the time with everything we see. So if, if you and I watch a movie, um, we'll take similar things, but there's a lot that we're going to take, su- like subtleties of the movie that are just like that we'll connect with and we'll go, oh, that, that's like in my life or whatever it is. And, and we'll, the feeling that we get from the movie will be very different in my mind versus your mind, even though it's the same, you know, the same film. And I think that's the same when we're listening to, to people around us and we're listening to stories and, and people's, um, maybe when you're having interaction with others, we kind of have to remember that we also have this filter all the time and it might not necessarily be the, the gospel truth your your little lens, you know, so it sort of lends itself to having some degree of humbleness uh, in life because you have to remember that you're projecting all the time. And I think this kind of leads into something else that we kind of um, took from from Ellie's wisdom was, you know, we often have this sort of arrogance in life to the way we judge things. So, for example, you know, she spoke a little about a little bit about um, palm. Uh, oil and this kind of thing and um, it's very easy to just go oh you know they're cutting down the forest it's like devastating we every all of them are bad and evil and I think a lot of people have felt that before with certain topics that are close to their heart but when she as a storyteller and an honest sort of portrayal of the truth um, what happens is when you look really closely at stories right then you suddenly start to see a human being and a father and a sister and a mother or a brother, someone that's trying to survive in life and trying to get by and not just this big corporation anymore. And I think that's so important to remember. Like there's, there's so many things like that in life that can happen where we, we f- immediately think it's bad or good. We, we, we put some kind of label on it and we like to live in a sort of binary way in life. But it's not always as, as clean cut as it might seem on the surface. So in that example, like, you know, the, we, we all know that, you know, the palm oil industry is, you know, orangutans are dying. But then, you know, when you look real closely, then there's a guy that's uh, working in the, in, the, in the farm or in, in, the, in the fields. And um, he's, got, he's got no income other than, than that. And he's, and he's supporting, you know, five, six other people in his family. And he doesn't know necessarily the ramifications of all this, but he, he goes to work just like anyone else and, and does his thing and, and works sort of an honest day uh, in his mind to, to help his own family that are, would, would starve otherwise. So then you suddenly sit, sitting with a situation where you say, okay, cool. You, you know, uh, okay. The orangutan, orangutans for sure. But then there's a guy and his children that also need work. Um, and so how do you start judging that? That suddenly becomes a lot more difficult to sort of pass, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, Craig. I mean, the it's always, I guess, kind of the the devil's in the detail, you know. And you, mm. yeah, we really need to look at this with a, a like an open heart and open mind, and really kind of, you know, assess things as a whole. And it, it is sometimes very difficult because the the underlying thing always kind of that seems the negative one always kind of kind of finds its way to the top. Um, mm. So. So, yeah, and then just talking about that, actually, um, about negativity, uh, she runs this amazing company, which uh, basically uh, sort of consolidates all data on plastic and plastic usage and, and where to find it and, and all these different type of things. And it's, it's an extremely, um, de- like just an amazing company, right, um, with what they actually, uh, all the information that they gather. And uh, they get a lot of information on all the plastic in the world. And uh, they have a lot of information on, say, specific brands that are wasting a lot of plastic. Um, and these are big brands that we all know. Okay, They all, you know, they all use tons of plastic. Um, and she's like, she's, she is all about storytelling and collaborating. Uh, there, she's like, there's no point in using 
uh, in naming and shaming people because that actually gets nowhere, you know? So she's all, all about using negative things to, to sort of turn them into a positive. So in, in this example, it's using negative data positively. Um, because, and we can use this in all parts of our lives, you know, turn negatives into positives. And, and in this case, um, using her storytelling, using the data that she has, basically turning a negative situation in terms of a big brand using a ton of plastic, um, how can we make this a positive PR story? You know, how can we use the force and the size of this big brand to actually help in the solution of plastic rather than just naming and shaming them. You know, we, we really need to come to the middle in a lot of these conversations with the big organizations because they're the ones that have the power. They're the ones that have the money, you know, um, and they're the ones that can make a really good story out of this um, and use it for the positive. So there's, and there's, you know, this is on a big scale, of course, but we can use this kind of theory on a much smaller scale, like in our own lives too, you know, of, of always trying to find the middle ground uh, with somebody or something, because that's where you actually uh, sort things out. It's in the middle, you know, if you're both fighting on either side of something and you're not willing to come to this middle ground, you're never actually going to resolve it. So um, that was like a big theme that, um, you know, I thought was, was really, um, really important for us to consider in all of our interactions in, in day-to-day lives. Hey, Greg. Yeah, fully Gareth. And I think that is a general good theme to, to take into things and, and also find ways to spin the positive and find people find collaboration to do so. So I think those are really great uh, piece of advice and sort of was off the back of, um, you know, talking about plastics and, and, and you mentioned that Ellie has this incredible uh, company. Uh, so so she's basically she's mapping where all the plastics are in the world, you know, like uh, ultimately that's where she wants to get to at this, at this stage, her company is, has done like certain areas of the world or parts of the globe. And the weird thing is when they, when people are looking for plastic and how plastic travels, like where does it come from? How are these, these big sort of, monsters of plastic moving around beaches and seaways and and rivers and things like that um the scary thing is that actually 99 percent of the plastic is is sort of missing so in other words we we can see big chunks of it on the beach and stuff but there's a lot of it that we can't actually see and um the cool thing is that she's using some incredible tech uh through her company and drone technology and all sorts of incredible things to sort of um map where um, this plastic is so that we can actually start identifying where it's coming from. Uh, and as you said earlier, Gareth, um, then, then help people uh, and companies know, okay, these are the ones that are doing this. So let's work together to, to reverse that. So that data is, in, is sort of super important to have. Um, and, and then also she wants to find a place of like, okay, we need to, we need to find ways within this plastic problem to sort of, turn it around once again into a positive and maybe when there's a plastic revolution it's like the in the she spoke about the gold rush there's going to be a plastic rush where where that plastic's going to be valuable when we can find it and if, if she can point us in the direction uh where it is people can actually make a buck from uh retrieving that plastic then we're in a winning then we're in a winning space but she also told us a few other sort of interesting things about um uh how quite quite how hectic the plastic sort of problem is hey yeah for sure craig and, and just some like interesting stuff like uh which she said and she said that for one a one liter bottle of uh, water that you buy it actually takes 10 liters to make that bottle which is like kind of ridiculous uh when you think about it another thing is and this is once you get into the detail of things and she obviously has all this data which is once again fascinating is the price of water, right? So the price of the, the bottle of water that you, uh, that you buy in a shop is like, I mean, it's almost like it's free, basically. And that, that's, the, that's the price of it. Uh, almost what you're buying is you're buying a plastic bottle. That's the cost mm-hmm. of everything. So you're going to a shop, you're buying a plastic bottle of water, and fair enough, you might need it, you know, at that time, like whatever, you're traveling, you're in a city, you don't have access. Uh, 
But the thing is, you actually, what you're paying for is you're paying for a bottle of plastic, you know, a plastic <laughs> bottle, which is kind of crazy, you know, because it just kind of makes you think about everything that you're consuming at the end of the day, you know, like so much is about the branding and the marketing and all these sort of things. Like, what are you actually buying? So it's really interesting when you think about it like that, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, she talks about big companies that say that they, uh, they sell lots of water, for example, or they might sell other like uh, fizzy drink products, for example, you know, actually what they're doing is they're in the plastic bottle industry. They're not in the drinks industry, um, which is, you know, once again, fascinating as well, like, and, and concerning and, and all these all other type of sort of emotions as well. So um, it's really important for us to be conscious of what we are actually buying. And, and, you know, then that might help us understand like, you know, why are we buying it? Should we buy it as well? So that, that sort of uh, conscious consumerism sort of cycle might kick in, which I think is also important for every single one of us to, to be aware of. Um, and yeah, and at the end of the day, um, we all need to kind of just find better ways to, um, to look after the planet and to look after the world and to kind of just make it like the ideal place that we want it to be. And uh, there's just, um, you know, if we all come together and we all work together, we meet in the middle, we tell good stories and we're open and we're honest with each other, um, then we can all do this together. And I think that's really, really, really powerful. Um, so yeah, Craig, yes. Uh, once again, so much from the conversation, like literally, you know, like you said, we could have <laughs> spoken for yeah. hours, um, based on everything that we, that we, um, that we learned from Ellie. Um, so we hope you guys, um, are also learning a hell of a lot. Um, we love to hear from you. So please get in touch with us. Um, and, uh, yeah, we can't wait to hear from you and just hope you have an amazing week and uh, we'll speak to you all soon. Cheers. Waking at dawn, packing the